Welcome to the Greater Launching Chamber of Commerce. This is our beautiful Sergeant Studios. I'm Brian Weatherford, your host. Today in our member spotlight, as always, we love to feature our members here at the Greater Launching Chamber of Commerce. And today we have a member that's actually representing two different organizations that are there for the sole purpose of making education not just affordable, but feasible for people who need and deserve to have this in their lives. Our guest today, we have not one, but two. We have Philip Wambasas and Leslie Bordeaux. Welcome to the show, folks. How are you? Good to see you. Good. Thank you for having us. So let, let's start from the very beginning. As I mentioned, you're representing two different organizations. And Leslie, if you don't mind, I'm going to go to Philip first. Talk about the parent company, if you will, and then we'll get into Inspired here in a bit. Well, uh, we're with Higher Education Servicing Corporation. Uh, we were founded in 1978 here in Arlington, Texas. Uh, we have a sister company that also uh, was founded here in 1978 by the name of North Texas Higher Education Authority. So our two organizations were created by and large by uh, the the efforts of City of Arlington and the City of Denton. Both cities had uh, large public colleges and universities, and they had a need to ensure that their uh, cities and that in the North Texas region had access to low cost federal loans. And so the creation of the North Texas Higher Education Authority was founded, and North Texas Higher Education Authority uh, Board is appointed by the cities of Arlington and Denton, or were, were um, appointed by the cities of Arlington and Denton. Today, C City of Arlington appoints the North Texas Higher Education Authority Board. The North Texas Higher Education Authority uh, needed someone to operate and manage the corporation, and so Higher Education Servicing Corporation was founded at the same time, a separate board, and um, and that's who we represent today, Higher Education Servicing Corporation. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. Our goal is to assist North Texas and Texas residents as a whole in obtaining low-cost federal and private education loans, and we've been doing that for 45 years. 45 years. We're going to touch on the anniversary here in just a second, but Leslie, I want to get to you if you don't mind. Tell me about Inspired. Now, what, what is the relationship here be, between the two organizations, and what do you do with regards to Inspired? So Inspired um, is the outreach division of the Higher Education Servicing Corporation. We um, created that brand in 2014, but the work has been done since 1998. Um, and so we go out into the schools to help high school students with everything they need for their post-high school experience. So we help them with college applications, college planning, financial aid applications, and we really work to expand that part of our work to and make sure that those students have that access to the higher education that they need. Do you focus on students and families in Arlington and Denton, like for the original thing, or what, what's your market? We are in the greater Arlington area, so we <laughs> we serve students in Arlington, Mansfield, Kennedale, and HEB ISDs. So are you, I would have to think that as long as both of the whole thing's been around. Do families and students seek you out now, or do you go look for them? Or what, what, it's a little of both. And so we have students. We have in our office, we have a community go center where people can come into our office and receive assistance. But we're also in every high school in Arlington, Mansfield, Kennedy, and then Trinity High School in HEB. And so students can come in. Um, and then we also call them in. So, you know, not every student is aware of what's available to them. Sure. And so we will send them passes and call them in and have a discussion with them about what they're doing. Well, and let's be honest here real quick. We keep talking about the students. The parents are the ones who are really interested in what you got yeah. to offer, right? Uh, when I was looking at the notes, you you, you service, if that's the right word, 10,000 families, students, <laughs> parents a year? That is our goal. We try to wow. serve 10,000 and make that a, an impactful service. And so, um, you know, we try to do that every year. That's our, our goal. We've continued to grow the program. And mm -hmm. um, and so we do uh, definitely with the parents on board, we get more involvement from the students. And that's really why we opened that community go center so the parents could come in as well. So, Phil, going back to you real quick, we know that, that the whole thing's been around for 45 years. How long have you been associated? I joined the company in 98 mm -hmm. uh, and in 2004. 15, I became the executive director. Mm -hmm. so I've been there 25 years this April. Goodness God. We have two anniversaries coming. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. yeah, Yours and everybody else's. Did you have a background in this sort of industry before? So I worked, uh, prior to joining Higher Education Servicing Corporation, I worked at Arlington National Banks. No, oh, for sure. Here, but it was here on Abrams Street for a long, long time. 
And uh, one of my clients became Higher Education Servicing Corporation and the North Texas Higher Education Authority. And through getting to know them, um, got really excited about the work they did. Um, I, I was in banking and finance, uh, but I love the idea of helping families mm -hmm. pursue and achieve a higher education. And so when there was an opportunity to join the company, I was super excited to do that. What, what have both of you found is the best way? You mentioned look, some people don't know about you. What's the best way to inform them? Is it just being there on campus to talk to people? It really is. You know, we have we work closely with the schools and they send out information about our services to parents and students. But really calling them in and, and just having a discussion because some students may not think they qualify for financial aid. So they may not think higher education is a, available to them. But once we're able to sit down with them, we can point out everything that is possible. Are you also aware of other organizations? For example, if you can't help someone with everything that they need, can you point them in a in a different direction uh, for some auxiliary funds? Yes. Um, and so we work very closely with UTA and TCU and different community partners um, that we're excited to partner with. And then we also have a lot of resources. We've built out a website, yourgocenter.com, that's full of resources that people can um, research scholarships and financial aid and all of those processes on their own if they're not able to come in and meet with us one-on-one. -on -one. I bet you put a lot of smiles on a lot of people's faces. <laughs> Again, mostly the parents <laughs> that, that write the check for these things. Tell me about, I'm always I'm always interested with the scholarship programs. You and I have a relationship with a scholarship organization. It has nothing to do with this. Scholarships are so vitally important. Tell me about this Catherine Bryan Memorial Scholarship. Which one of you would like to address that? I'll kick it off and then I'll turn it over to Leslie. But to Catherine Bryan was our executive director from the early days. Okay, days gotcha. uh, Until she retired in 2015. She, she was my predecessor. She gave her life to the organization in, in a sense, uh, over 35 years of service for the organization. And so when she retired and passed away just a couple years ago, we thought it was appropriate that as we wanted to launch this scholarship program to put it uh, in her memory and in her name. So Captain Bryan Memorial Scholarships, where that came from. And I'll turn it over to Leslie as to how we award that. Sure. So um, the scholarship's available to anybody who has met with us and received our, our services. So high school seniors, we open it up every year. Um, we've done it for two years now. We've been through two funding cycles, um, and we've given out 28 scholarships, totaling $46,000. Um, and so we're really excited about continuing to grow that. We went from eight scholarships our first year to 20 the second year. And so um, we're just excited to continue that and build upon it. Is this a, a self-funded program or how is this funded? Yeah. So uh, we have a couple other nonprofits that we off, uh, operate as well mm -hmm. um, through the city of Arlington. And through their proceeds and through the proceeds of Higher Education Servicing Corporation, we are committed to continuing to fund this. When we launched this two years ago, it was more of a pilot program. We wanted to get, kind of get our arms around it, understand what the prior, uh, conditions were for uh, applying for the scholarships and how we would approve it, get the funding mechanism in place and all that. So this last year was really our first year to really uh, begin to uh, increase the amount that we are awarding. Our goal is to continue, as Leslie said, to continue to grow that scholarship program, and we hope to um and make it a very sizable and beneficial program for the residents of Arlington. Uh, and again, we fund it out of our proceeds to our nonprofit activities. Well, I, I know that she she's honored to have that in, in her name, and and it was she still with us when the when the scholarship came in place. Passed. Yeah. So, but I bet there's family members. Maybe yeah, for that, sure. that are proud to have that. Well, tell me what else is exciting these days. I mean, everybody's talking about it, and we all know. I, I have no children myself, but I sure have friends with kids. And I hear about how expensive everything getting. Does that, in its own odd way, encourage you to continue doing what you're doing and get the word out more to help everybody because there's such a need out there? It really does. Um, you know, the need was already there, and then it grew exponentially with COVID and everything that happened during that time. And so there really is a great deal of need out there. But also there are scholarships and grant funds that go unclaimed every year. So we really want to work with the students to make sure they know what's available to them um, so that they can take advantage of that. So do, do the students come in to your facilities? Do you go to them? Is it Zoom calls? I mean, how, how are we getting the info out there? <laughs> we will meet with students however they want to meet okay. with us, but we use, most students, we meet with them in the high school. And so we're usually either in a classroom or a library. Every school is kind of a different location, but we have a, most schools, they're called go centers. 
And so we're in those ghost centers um, and we have uh, college students that are in there. So it's a near mir- near peer mentoring system. Um, I, I like to tell them I'm, I'm old and I'm a parent and they're not going to talk to me, but they'll talk to you because you just went through this. Um, so our college students are really there to give them that advice and experience of having just gone through. There probably is a bit of a relatability factor that's there that they can can talk on levels that there perhaps is. none of us <laughs> could. And that process is so different from when we went through it. So Oh, absolutely. I, I, I got to say this before I forget. I, I think the name itself, Inspired, is so unique, particularly the spelling. <laughs> Let's be out. Do you get credit for that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people uh, pronounce it Inspire Ed. Yeah. And it's actually Inspired, but Inspire Ed is a great uh, version of it. Well, obviously. Yeah. We're excited about the name. Again, we've been working in the high school since 78. Um, but in 2010, we decided to expand our outreach and make it more of an important part of our nonprofit mission and purpose and services. And so in 2010, we began working in the high schools. And again, as Leslie said, in 2014, we rebranded our outreach programs as Inspired, and it's really, uh, really fits well with the work we do, inspiring kids to pursue a higher education. Yeah, you mentioned earlier that your market is the greater Arlington area. Sadly, the market for people who need some help getting to school is much broader than the greater Arlington area. Are there other organizations around the county? You've been around for 45 years now. Are there newer organizations that have heard about you that maybe sought out some advice so maybe they can try to do the same thing? Yeah, I mean, we we are routinely contacted by companies or, or, I'm sorry, organizations outside the area or schools outside the area. We're just very uh, cognizant that we can only go so far. And as you know, Dallas-Fort Worth has, what, over 6 million people or something like that, a large amount of people. And so uh, some of our colleagues around the country from states like Rhode Island, and so it blows their mind, the population that we're trying to deal with here only in the, in the Arlington area. Right. And so, um, you know, we're cognizant of not spreading ourselves too thin. We, we would rather serve fewer students, but serve them well than to serve a, a lot of students and not serve them very well. So we're, we're trying to stay as close to home as we can. On the other hand, uh, our parent company, Higher Education Servicing Corporation, we do a lot of other work. We, okay. we provide, uh, low-cost private education loans to college students and families. So what we do through uh, through Inspired and our outreach programs is we help students pursue college and careers, help them with their applications, help them with their fastest, help them try to get all the free and, free and gift aid they can get. But the reality is most families are left with a gap, and um, that typically comes in the form of a federal loan and in some cases, we can offer them a better or, or lower cost private loan. And so we still work with uh, tens of thousands of families, helping them fill that gap with as low a cost of financial aid or financial assistance as we can in the form of loans. And loans are kind of a dirty word. Right. They're just the reality. And um, a lot of families have to rely on those to cover a portion of their cost of attendance. And so we step in. Uh, many times to help try to fill that gap. When you're working with the students to set up their financial aid, are you restricted to certain universities? Can they use the money anywhere? For example, I'm going to go way out there, and, and if I'm wrong, just slap me, I'll bring it back to center. Trade schools come to mind. Uh, are you are you available for that as well? Yes. We work with students no matter what their plan is. Even if they want to go into the military, we're, we'll connect them with the recruiter that serves their okay. school. Um, so we really want to just make sure that the students have a plan and are going in that direction and know what they need to do next. Um, so we'll work with any college or university and our scholarships will as well. So the Catherine Bryan Memorial Scholarships are applicable at any um, accredited trade school or community college or four-year university. Well, good. I'm glad I didn't go that far out there because uh, we all read the articles these days. The, the traditional four-year school is not for everyone. Uh, a lot of people, they, they go through the four-year school and what do they have is a piece of paper on the wall and a lot of debt so trade schools is a great avenue and it's so nice to know that you're there to help people there too well if we sit here in the greater Arlington chamber today i've got to ask i mean you've obviously been very valuable very active members in the chamber for some time why <laughs> i mean for somebody out there that's watching maybe they're thinking about joining the chamber they can't really decide do you have any reasons maybe that they should consider it what's the chamber been able to do for you guys yeah well um 
connections, probably the biggest thing, uh, the networking opportunities. Um, and I think, but for me, the biggest part is just being part of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really important that our organization founded in part by the city of Arlington, that we invest in Arlington and we give back to Arlington. And so the chamber gives us great opportunity. Sad thing, Leslie. I see. I see you in these halls a lot. <laughs> I would say the same thing. You know, we. I'm involved with Partners in Education and the Women's Alliance and and different aspects of the chamber. But definitely, um, giving back uh, to the Arlington community is why I like to stay involved. Well, and, and it is kind of fun having grown up here, and you got you've got an upper upper degree at UTA. <laughs> you, know, you have your footprints in Arlington all over the place. You've got to put a smile on your face to be able to uh, give back to the community that's been for you yeah. most of your life. You know, and for you, a big chunk of your life as well. So we appreciate that. We appreciate your membership, first and foremost. Thank you for that. But on a much broader scale, thank you for everything you do to bring education to people that frankly may not be able to do it without you. You've been doing it for 45 years now. Happy silver anniversary to you. Thank you. And congratulations on that. And thank you both for being here today. It's good stuff. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, folks, as we know, and as certainly as they know, together we succeed. This is what we like to say here at the Greater Washington Chamber of Commerce because it's exactly what we do, and we can't do it without our great members like the ones right here today. Thanks for being with us. We'll catch you next time.